But firstly, yeah. can I just say thank you for your time? Yeah, of course. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since Chris and I originally spoke. Um, and one of the things the Chamber are trying to do is kind of just increase the options of, of giving support to companies that are out there. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously this whole new new normal that we're living in it was quite funny wasn't it chris that i came up with i, I said new normal and you a big smile came across your face because that's how how you guys are, are describing it aren't you and um it, it, it basically is a new normal isn't it this whole i know um a few people work from home anyway but generally speaking it's just going to be something that I, I really can't see is going to go back to the old way for everybody i think more and more people are going to be going doing this so much appreciated for your time, Chris, uh, Chris and Scott, and um, fire away. Can we okay, can we record, right. by the way? Sorry. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to press some buttons a second and hope this works. So all being well, I should be going. This one, share, and then play. Cool. Can you all see a screen that says technology tips for business as usual? Yeah. yeah, wonderful. So yeah, the new normal, it's not a, uh, unfortunately, it's not a phrase any of us can own up to penning ourselves. It's out there. Everyone's saying the same thing. It's in the press. It's in the media. Uh, it's just a, a new buzzword, but it does describe very much where we're at at the moment. Um, and it looks like this is going to be how it is for a long, long time and until at least some sort of vaccine is found. Um, and it's just a bit of a, um, it was, yeah, it was a massive wake up call to a lot of businesses and it showed how well prepared some people were, how underprepared some people were. Um, but then most importantly, it's, it's, it's how many people have embraced it and they're looking at ways of for business to continue as, as normal and for us to survive. How, how do we do that and what are we going to do? Um, so I, I'm not obviously going to, yeah, I, I can't say I've, I've got the, the, the golden bullet and I've got all the answers for you, but, um, as a company, uh, sets out are doing all right. And some of those ideas have come from me. Some of them have come from other members of the senior team and the directors. We've got quite a, a very, yeah, very wide global view. The six of us in our, in our, uh, our team. So yeah, my name's Scott. I'm the tech ops manager. And then Chris is on the call with us as well. He heads up our uh, account management team and then me and him together with our board of directors, we make the senior management team. And we've, like I said, I think we've fared the storm pretty well uh we have to start off with we well there was what what an excess we lost count we started trying to count but when we got over 500 people it became too big to manage but that's how many people we've worked with to enable them to work from home um so when this all kicked off that spike was was massive and the, the spike like 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 the disease is yeah we, we've hit the top of that curve and, and now to us it's it's business as normal, but it is that new normal. And we're all working from home. There's 22 of us. We meet and chat every morning online and we, we have a debrief every afternoon. So we're, we're pretty location agnostic. We have been for a long time. Uh, we rely very little on what we have on site. Uh, everything is, is cloud-based. Um, or if there is anything that's running on site, we've got yeah, access to it. Um, <coughs> Obviously, working from home is a bit different uh, to working in the office. Uh, in the office, we've got all open plan. We've all got multiple screens, uh, comfy chairs and big desks. And, and now we're at home. Some people are hunched around a little laptop. Um, some people are plugged into their TV. Some people are in their bedrooms. It's, it's all sorts of, of different places. So um, to start off with, what I want to talk about really is, yeah, we've got a guide online. Um, I will share some links in the chat afterwards, but if you go to that website, it covers some of what we're talking about today and it's, it's a, a, li a little bit uh, more detail. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll put that in the chat later with some links as well. So let's start, we're going to talk about you. So one of the first things about working from home, uh, you've all been doing it now for a long time. Uh, I suffered from this one myself, so I can't talk about it uh, in enough detail, really. First couple of weeks hit me pretty hard. I tried doing everything I could, and work doesn't stop when you're at home, because you wake up at work and you go to bed at work. 
So I was trying to do everything and anything and I threw myself into work and my wife and my children took the back burner and I kind of burnt out a little bit. So I had a, I did have a week off. I had a staycation. Uh, a lot of the guys I worked with, yeah, I thought I was mad for taking a week off, but it got me into the, the swing of being at home and, and understanding that this is what it's going to be like now. So um, it is going to be difficult. It is going to be, yeah, you're not going to be able to do as much as you, 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 normally bred to do you're not going to be as productive as you would normally be unless you can have some kind of flash moment where you think of a a, a particular market that's you can yeah you can hit hard now and and you're going to bloom but again that's a wave you can only ride until things are yeah things change again but when you're at home your connection's not going to be the same things are going to take longer there's going to be distractions there's going to be uh yeah breaks in your concentration you're going to feel less motivated expect that be empathetic with others because they're in exactly the same situation and don't put those pressures on yourself and other people. When you're working at home, claim a space and make it your own. Um, some people have been using a dressing table. Um, some people have been using the kitchen table or a sideboard or wherever you're using, have a difference between work and normal so if it's your dressing table clear everything off in the morning and make it your workspace and then put everything back afterwards and try and separate in your head this is my workspace this is my um yeah this is my normal leisure and, and where i live space it's quite important to do uh, try and keep things ergonomic if you're sat on a sofa use a lap tray i mean try not to use yeah be sat on a sofa for too long you'll get a terrible back but likewise if you're stuck in a room and you have been for the last six weeks Mix it up a bit. Go and work on the kitchen table one day. If the weather's nice, go and work out in the garden. Or we've all got Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, try, try. Yeah, don't put unnecessary pressures on yourself. To, yeah, to try and be in the same place all the time. As a rule of thumb, try not to work in your bedroom. Your bedroom should be your sleep space, and it's really like really hard to switch off if you mix those two together. Um, I know that's easier for some people than others, but if you can do it, try and do it. Um, if you're in a room, close the door. Let people know. Yeah, that that's what you're doing. And yeah, like I was saying, keep things tidy. Uh, yeah, keep things separate. Get yourself into a proper routine. Um, this is one of the ones I struggled with. Work the hours you normally would and have regular breaks. That's quite important as well. If you're not very good at that, set an alarm. Uh, set an alarm for every two hours at a screen maybe. Have 15 minutes to walk away. Go and have a coffee. Catch up with your family. They're in your house. Like, yeah, like, you know, don't, don't be strangers. Let, get them involved a little bit. My daughter's nine uh, and she quite regularly, so she's doing school, yeah, school uh, homeschooling. Um, she does three, four hours of that a day, but then she'll come and sit up here and she'll be like, dad, can I come chill with you? She'll sit on the sofa in the office. She sat there playing Switch or we put the telly on and I carry on working, but she's quite intrigued to see what I'm doing. She's never been at my work before. So it's a great opportunity and it's, it's, it's kind of a, a mindset to, get her to understand that life is still, it might be weird for her, but life's still continuing for dad. Um, eat your lunch away from your workspace as well. Like I said, spend your time with your family. Book lunch in if you can do. Um, if you've got yeah, other members of the family that are working at home, try and coincide all your lunches together so you get that, that normal working environment. And then the other one, establish some ground rules in your house. So if you're living with family, housemates, friends, let them know your office hours. Let them know when you're on an important call. Um, communicate with them and, and if, if need be put a hand scribbled sign on your door saying do not disturb when you're on an important call uh, but likewise uh, listen to them as well um, obviously yeah you, no one's the most important person in their house we're all as important as each other if your child's got something important and they're on a video call with their teachers um, yeah be there for them and do that as well every everything kind of rebalances a little bit here so this is kind of minimize inter yeah, interruptions and distractions. Close down social media is a big one as well. If you, uh, it's really easy. Now everyone's at home. Everyone's messaging each other. What are you doing now? Put it away. You wouldn't do it at work. Don't do it while you're at home in those working hours. Don't let it mix into your routine. And most importantly, don't work when you don't have to. Just because you're at home and you're working from home doesn't mean your work now carries on all of the time. Um, Say goodbye at the end of the day. Say good morning in the morning to your colleagues. Let them know when you start and you finish. And try not to pick stuff up outside of those hours. Otherwise, it just it will never end. So that's you. Let's now focus on work and how best to survive. And, 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 and yeah, over communicate is one of the first things. Share what you're doing, where you're doing it, 
why you're doing it, and who you're doing it with. So if you're about to pick up on a project, let your colleagues know that where you're at with that project or what project you're on um, and where you've got to. Um, and do that in any way you can, whether that's messaging, phone calls, um, Skype video conferences. We have a, like I was saying earlier before we started, every morning we have 22 of us on a video call. Uh, as a morning brief, we go through our projects, our service tickets, our software, our account management, so everybody knows where the business is at and what everybody is doing today. And then at three o'clock, we have a debrief before, yeah, but before the end of the day, we've got staff that finish at half four, half five and half six. So three o'clock is a really good time where we're at now and what, yeah, what's being done to wrap up the day. Um, the importance of that really is number one, if you do fall ill and you've got to self isolate and you can't be at your desk, it's really hard to hand notes and stuff over to people if you haven't done it in the first place. So let people know what you're doing, why you're doing it and where you're doing it. Share your progress with them all. Check in is the next one. So like we were saying, um, be there for each other. It's, more, it's kind of as important as letting people know where you're at. Everyone's in this same situation. Some people don't have family at home. So checking in is quite important. It's kind of important for their well-being as well. Organize a couple of points in the day where you would check in. So before a meeting like this, I had a quick Zoom call with, with Chris just to test everything was working. Um, but those are kind of water cooling moments <coughs> you have when you're, when you're at work. They're, they're just as important now. So have a phone call, see what people are doing, chat about their family, stuff you would normally would do in your downtime at work. So then let's talk about technology and how technology is going to help you to work from home. So we'll start with your equipment. Now, most of you, obviously, you've already been home for a long time. Um, your equipment, what you're using right now is, is, is what you've got. And it has been quite hard to get more stuff because of delivery slots and stuff. Everything's kind of short now, so you can get more stuff in. So we're going to be at home for a long time. And if this lifts and when it lifts, it's going to lift in a very soft kind of manner. And there's a chance that they may, uh, highly likely, if that peak starts to rise again, they're going to lock us down again. And we're going to be riding up and down in waves of, that's what we mean by this is going to be normal. Be prepared for it. Don't, don't clutch to the one day they're just going to go, okay, everyone can go back to work and it'll be normal. This is going to be like this for some time. And who knows if something comes about again. Um, so yeah, be, be prepared for it. So when you're at home and you've got kit, like we're saying, plug into TVs if you can, test your speakers, test your microphones, look at your webcam. If you haven't got a good webcam, there are mobile apps out there that will use your mobile phone as a webcam. I'll share some links later on with some, some handy links for stuff on there. Get a stock of batteries as well if you've got wireless mice and keyboards. Um, if you can get into your office safely and there's nobody there and your, yeah, your management team will, will let you, go and borrow some screens and keyboards and mice. I've brought my own chair home. So things that you would normally have to make your working life better, if your company will let you take them home, take them home and try and build that kind of office environment that you've got yeah, at work when you're at home. The next one really is, yeah, your connectivity. So when you're at home, like we were saying earlier, cut yourself a little bit of slack. Your home internet is not going to be as fast as your work internet. Uh, it's going to have different SLAs. So if something goes wrong, you're on a home uh, connection. So if you phone your provider or your IT company phone your provider, your provider is not going to be as helpful as they would with a business line because it's a much cheaper uh, yeah, a much cheaper connection. The other thing you've got to bear in mind is there's other people in your house fighting for that connection. Now, sometimes, yeah, that does work. Your son might be on Netflix. That happens a lot to me. Um, I got, so there's four of us in our house. We're all working from home. We're all on the internet at the same time. And luckily we've got quite good internet, but there are occasions when we do get little spikes outside of work. I've started doing, I'm a musician. Uh, I've started doing some live streams and some gigs online on a Saturday evening. And my family all make sure they stay off the internet when they do it. So I've got as much of the internet as possible to make sure that that presentation out to the world is as best quality as possible. That works as well with things like this for doing this call. So yeah, again, my, my family are off the internet at the moment to make sure that this works as, as well as possible. Some people, their connectivity at home isn't, yeah, like we're saying, isn't as good or yeah, it's just completely unusable. Um, if you've got 3G, 4G at home, start looking at mobile hotspots. We've got some guides on, on the link I shared at the beginning. 
Uh, mobile hotspots will allow you to use your mobile phone and the internet that your mobile phone creates with your laptop or your PC. Uh, that's a really good one as a get out of jail free card if your internet goes down as well. So just be prepared for that one. And again, like I said earlier, test it. That's really important. When you're doing stuff like this and you're working from home, you still want to look slick. You still want to look professional. So test those things before you do them. And then the biggest one working from home is security. Now, a lot of us are using our home PCs uh, because they haven't had the ability to yeah, take some work PCs home. Um, now your home PC isn't necessarily as secure as your works PC. Make sure you've got your Windows updates on there, your Mac updates. You've got a good antivirus on there. If you haven't got a good antivirus, um, see if your work will provide you with one. Um, ESET at the moment are offering free antivirus until COVID-19 lock lifts. Um, that's a good one to, to make a note of. Bear in mind, obviously, not, there's no such thing as a free meal. Um, if you install ESET on your machine, they're probably going to be hounding you for payment it, well, well, as soon as it lifts not on the basis of yeah like to pay for what you've used but they're going to want you to be a customer moving forwards so that's why they're offering it out there at the moment and the other one that's kind of important is if you're using your home pc and you're connecting to works resources don't save your works passwords on your home pc because your home pc is usually used by other members of your family so if your kid gets on there and there's a shortcut on the desktop to your remote desktop server, would you really let your kid access your works PC? So no, don't save that password in there. Keep it secure. Um, it's not, a, yeah, I wouldn't regard it as a bigger threat as an outside threat, but you don't want a, uh, yeah, a, a 14 year old kid having access to your works resources. Just yeah, be, be sensible about it. One of the ones that's really um, an interesting one of that is, People have been using lots of different apps. There was an app called House Party that people have been using. Um, it's kind of like Zoom, but it's designed for having a, a party on video conferencing. And a lot of people were intrigued as to how uh, the House Party app, um, their database, uh, they, they believe there was a breach of their database. And people that had been installing House Party were finding that some of their other apps had been breached. And they couldn't understand why, because they hadn't provided their email address to House Party. And when they install that app on their phone, all apps now on Android and iOS ask you security things. And it said on there, do you, yeah, do you want to allow this app to have access to your contacts? And they've pressed yes, um, because that's how House Party works and it wants to see who else has got House Party. But in that process, House Party now knows your email address because your email address is in your own contact called my contact. Um, and from that, the password stored in plain text. They've used the same password for the house party app as someone's Facebook account or um, Spotify. And from that breach, they've managed to get in. So with security, we talk about security lots. It's something, um, yeah, it's kind of bread and butter when it comes to IT. Um, try and use different passwords uh, for everything. It's, it's kind of important. Uh, there's other tips and guides out there that we use all the time. So two-factor authentication, um, is really important and um, we recommend using LastPass. LastPass is free. Um, it will create all your passwords for you and they're horrible passwords that you will never remember but that means no one will ever guess them either but it does it all for you. Um, so yeah, have a look. So let's talk a little bit more about connectivity. So while we're at home, we need to use that connectivity to better access the office. Uh, and in the office, there are Mac drives, so that's where all our data lives. There's business software, um, which is quite important. So things like Sage uh, and other lines of business software, all, all, very, all very important. Uh, and to better connect to those, people are using either a VPN um, or they're using remote desktop. Um, they're really the best ways in and the most secure ways in. There's other software that will let you in, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I wanted to talk a little bit about VPNs and remote desktops and how they work in a kind of a layman's way, so you understand and um, the importance of the two working kind of together. So let's talk about what's out there. So we've got home workers. This is everyone at home. We've got your office. So in your office, you've got your server, your firewall, and all your office PCs. And in the middle is, is the internet, depicted by the cloud here. So let's have a look at how it would normally connect. So everyone at home connects to the internet. And everyone in the office connects to their server. Uh, their server connects to their firewall. They connect to their firewall and they go through the firewall or router to get out to the internet. So 
what we need to try and do now is those resources that are in your office, you need to be able to access from home. Um, and that's what people have been doing. So to kind of understand how that works, there is route one, when we talk about remote desktop um, or a VPN. So your home, you connect to the internet, uh, you then connect to your firewall using a VPN. So a VPN basically will bring your home machines over here uh, into your office environment and being in your office environment. So it, it's almost as if you are on your office network. Once you're in your office network, you can then like you would as an office PC connect to your server. If you've got remote desktop on that server or a remote desktop server, you can connect to it and that's how you're getting through. So that's just using a, a, yeah, a, a flat VPN. That's option one, um, which a lot of companies have been doing. The other one that's kind of really taken off is this one. So you're using the internet to connect to the internet, use a VPN to connect to your firewall, and then you've been using remote desktop to actually connect to their office PCs because their office PCs, unlike connecting from your home PC to, to a server and those Mac drives, you've got to set up your home PC to have all those Mac drives assigned to it, all the passwords and things that you'd have in your browser, all the software and stuff that you can't necessarily access because it's installed on your home PC. So what we've been doing with a lot of companies is we've been turning on remote desktop for people's own PCs and they've been connecting through the internet using the VPN to connect to their office environment and then connecting directly onto their works PC. So on their desktop or their laptop or, or, or their iPad that they've got at home, they've literally got a shortcut that says my works PC, they open it and they log into their works PC and off they go. And it's a, a, a real easy way of, of being able to do everything you would normally do from work remotely. And it, it leaves that real clear divide between what's my PC and what's my works PC. The biggest tip with this one though, is if you do have it set up and your IT company or, or your provider set this up for you, do not turn off your works PC at the end of the day. Because if you turn off your works PC, you cannot connect to it again without someone going into the office and turning it back on for you. I say that and it sounds like common sense, but some people do do it and it doesn't matter how many times we say to people, there's some people that's just a force of habit. Um, so yeah, that is how VPNs and RDP work in a, in a, a very, um, yeah, very easy to describe way. Other ways to connect to your PCs if you don't have VPNs or, 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 um, or remote desktop. There's apps out there like GoToPC, uh, LogMeIn, TeamViewer, uh, AnyDesk, and Screen Connect are also offering a free trial for remote workforce at the moment as well. So that'll give you 25 free licenses. Screen Connect, great. That's what we use to support our customers. Uh, we've got access to about 2,000 machines on Screen Connect at any one time. So, it, it, yeah, it scales really well. And if we can do that at that sort of scale for yeah, people in a smaller situation, um, yeah, they're just as good. These are all tried and tested. They all come with a price. Um, and how these work is that you're not using a VPN and you're not using a remote desktop. You're actually installing a little application on your works PC. And then that opens up with a secure username and password to give you access. But we'll share the links again uh, afterwards. So emails from home communication. There's lots of different ways to access emails depending on who your provider is. If you're Office 365, you can just go to outlook.office.com. Uh, if you've got uh, a, an email exchange server at work, you've usually got Outlook web access. Some people use Gmail as well. Um, so you, on your works PC, you've got Outlook, with usually uh, a full full blown um, email client. If you haven't got that installed on your home PC and you've got Office 365 with the right licenses, you can install it and activate it. But if not, if you go to portal.office.com or your exchange online, or you go to gmail.com, whoever your provider is, there are web-based versions of your email clients as well. And nowadays they're pretty much at parity. They're pretty much identical to using the full version of Outlook. Um, we'll share some links at the end again, but yeah, what I'm trying to say there is, is just because you haven't got Outlook doesn't mean you can't, yeah, you, you can't do the work you would normally do. There are some free apps out there as well for Mac users. So things like Spark, I use Spark. I think it's a, a fantastic app on a, on a Mac. I think it's better than Outlook. Um, on, on an iPhone or an iPad, Outlook is free and the Spark app is free as well. So, same with uh, Android. So loosely with that Office apps, if you've got, 
Microsoft Office installed on your home PC, that's fantastic. You can use that. If you've got a remote desktop onto your works PC, you can use Office that's on your works PC. If you're a business that subscribes to Office 365, you can go to portal.office.com and you can use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all in the browser. You don't actually need to install the app. They're quicker than they are than um, using them oh yeah, uh, on a, a local PC as well because your files are already in the cloud that, you, yeah, that you're accessing. Um, if you don't have an office license at home and you don't have Office 365 and your business isn't going to pay for your office for you, there is a free alternative called LibreOffice. Um, like all free software, it's never as good as the paid for software, but it will get you out of the hole. Um, it, it works. Uh, and also, it's not as bad as you would think it is because anyone that uses Linux don't get to use Microsoft Office anyway, and they have to use LibreOffice or alternatives. That's where it was made originally, and that's, that, that's where it's come from since. Um, with Office as well, you can use Teams. So Teams has um, the, the Teams app. If you've got your uh, documents in the cloud already, which we'll talk about shortly, the Teams app have the web-based versions of Office built into them as well. So next up, we want to talk about phones. Obviously, phones are quite important. That's where a lot of our business comes through. We're a support desk, mostly. Um, so a lot of my engineers have taken, we've got VoIP, so uh, we've got hosted VoIP as well. So what that means is uh, some of my engineers have taken their phone home with them, at their actual desk phone, and just plugged it in at home. It connects to the internet and it works. They haven't got to do a thing. Uh, I myself didn't do that. I've got a soft phone installed on my mobile. Um, there's lots and lots of different soft phone providers out there. I'll share some links again at the end. We recommend one. Uh, there's Bria or Groundwire. Bria's got a monthly subscription, but Groundwire is £10. £10 up front and you've got the app, as so long as your current phone provider supports it. So that's what soft phones are. If you're not sure about that, speak to your telecoms provider and ask them how your VoIP system works and ask, do you have a facility that I can use a soft phone? They'll provide you with the credentials um, and, and how that works. If you can't, the other option is to forward your phone calls. So even if you're not on VoIP and you've got a standard landline, if you phone BT or your provider and say, look, I'm not in my office, I need to get my calls forwarded to somewhere, they can forward them to a mobile for you. One of the other really cool things out there is a piece of software, it's an online thing, it's called Flextel. Um, they will sell you a virtual mobile phone number or a virtual landline number. Um, it's usually about a pound, it's not a lot of money at all. That virtual number you can set up with support from Flextel to do things like cascades and call blasts. So you can, using their system, they'll give you a, a, a virtual telephone number that you forward your landline telephone numbers to and when that receives that phone call, it will ring all of your mobiles at the same time as a call blast, or it will go through them sequentially until somebody answers. And that's something you can do now, uh, yeah, before you invest in looking at soft phones and, and, and VoIP and, and other, other things. And it's something to get you again out of that hole if you're stuck at the moment and, and kind of embrace this new environment. Uh, it works really well. A tip on that one, if you're doing call blasts or you're doing uh, cascades, Get people to turn their voicemail off of their mobile because when you do a call blast or a cascade it's not intelligent enough to know who answers the phone if a voicemail answers the phone it just assumes someone's answered and therefore all of the other phones will stop ringing so either turn your voicemail off if you can or turn it on for as long as you can so apps to help you work from home spoke about it briefly earlier microsoft teams I haven't been a big fan of Microsoft Teams up until recently. Um, they have turned on a lot more features and you can do a lot more in there now. And they've certainly turned on things like private channels and stuff. Microsoft Teams is available to anyone with an Office 365 subscription. Um, before you go about just turning it on though, there's lots of things you need to consider. You need to start looking at locking things down in Office 365. Uh, at the moment, as a vanilla install, uh, anyone can create a Microsoft team and that can cause some serious fragmentation. So you need to turn some rules on to make sure you don't have too many teams because it's not clever enough to understand that you could have three teams with the same name and that's just going to confuse some people. They're not going to know who's chatting with who. They're not going to know where files are stored. So before you go for it, as great as a resource it is, make sure you speak to your provider to make sure it's set up correctly before you start running with it. Um, Slack is the next one. We use Slack every day. Slack is a great tool for sending messages uh, yeah, between everyone that works. We have different channels for different projects, different resources, 
Uh, we even have a, a, a food orders channel that we put in when we provide free food on a on the last Friday of every month to all our employees. Um, they can put in there, uh, yeah, what, what do you want to order? And they put their orders in and we get it sorted for them. It's a great tool. Zoom, we're on it. Uh, Zoom, uh, it's got a lot of bad press recently, uh, but I think that's just because the press doesn't like anyone particularly being successful. Uh, anyone, uh, new product launches, anything that's new and shiny, anyone tries to pick it apart and pull it apart. Yes, there were some security issues to start off with. Um, Zoom put their hand up and admitted that they, they, they kind of broke a few rules to try and make that app as simple as possible. Um, they've tightened those up. The biggest tip really with Zoom is if you're creating something like we have today, don't just share a public link, put a password on there as well and share that link. The reason why it was, uh, yeah, we had people popping up in, in random uh, chats that shouldn't have been appearing was they were just sharing these public links and they're only short strings of numbers that anyone can guess. Um, you put a password on there, it does make it a lot more secure. Um, so yeah, it's certainly one of the, the better things to do. I just had a message come through there. Neil's got the dart off, not a problem. Thank you, Neil, thanks for joining us. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've got no, no problems with Zoom. I use it, uh, yeah, like I say, we use it every day. We've used other platforms. There's loads and loads of different ones out there. Um, the biggest thing really is a lot of people like WhatsApp, social media uh, is kind of a no-no for using it for business use. It's really hard to police. Um, it's not designed for business use. All of the tools that we've mentioned earlier have things like retention policies. Uh, you can do investigations if there's any workplace bullying. Um, they're all designed for that sort of thing. Start, as soon as you start using social media, you start using things like Facebook and WhatsApp. And yeah, they're tools that are out there. Number one, you're mixing your work life with your personal life, which is never really a, a great recommendation. Uh, number two, if something does go wrong and you've got to do, yeah, yeah, yeah look into it. it. It's just not designed for it. So we advise don't use it. So remote files, we talked about earlier accessing stuff that's already on your servers. A lot of companies have already moved to the cloud, and if not, this has kind of yeah, pushed them in the direction of it's probably a good thing to be doing. If you're in the cloud, you can use Microsoft Teams to edit files without even having, well, from any computer, from your mobile phone while you're yeah, sat in the bathroom. You can do, do it from anywhere, and it just makes so much more sense to be able to do it. And Office 365 offers that through OneDrive Share and SharePoint, which are the backbone of Microsoft Teams. Um, so using OneDrive and SharePoint is just like an online cloud resource, but then Teams can put a really nice front end on it that's user-friendly to give you access to the resources that you only need access to. But more importantly, you can work on everything at the same time. So an Excel spreadsheet that's on OneDrive or, or SharePoint, if you open it through SharePoint or through Teams, you can have 10 people working in that Excel spreadsheet at the same time, um, all on different tabs, all in different fields. And it, you all see people updating it live. And that's something that, yeah, cloud, cloud computing has, has enabled for us. So that's Microsoft offering. There are alternatives. Obviously, there's Dropbox. Um, there's WeTransfer. So WeTransfer, if, you don't, if you're not already invested in stuff like Google Drive, um, SharePoint Box, uh, it, we transfer is a, 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 another one. Get you out of a hole now. I've got a large file I'm working on at home. Uh, I've downloaded it from my work server. I need to send it to Bob. Um, I can't send him an email because it's, I don't know, it's a two gig file. It's a folder with lots and lots of different files within it. I can go to wetransfer.com, upload that file to wetransfer.com and it will send him a link. He clicks the link and he can download it. Uh, we transfer is, is, is free. Uh, you can log into it for up to two gig files. Um, there's also a paid for version as well. Uh, and there's no real limitations on that paid for one. You can share it amongst your company if you wanted to. And again, it, it gets you out of, out of that hole for the meantime until you start looking at these, these different cloud, yeah, cl cloud environments that are out there. And that kind of covers where we're at. With, with, with well, what, what tips and, and tricks and things that are out there that you can use. Um, on closing thoughts, the most important thing I found really is, it's just everyone's got their own IT providers. Um, they've got more IT tech savvy people that work in the company. They've got colleagues that seem to be doing slightly better than them or they are doing slightly better than their colleagues. 
vice versa. Reach out, speak to people. Um, find out what other people are doing. Share tips. We're all in this together. We're all doing exactly the same thing. Um, no one should really be better off than anybody else. So let's, let's try and, and, and deal it that way. Um, that works with technology. That works with just keeping your head above water. Um, just, just keeping your business running and also your own well-being. Like, take time to, to spend time with people. We've been doing it lots um, with work colleagues. We do it nearly every night. We catch up with family. We do some pub quizzes online. Um, my wife's been sewing um, hundreds and hundreds of face masks for friends and family and, and colleagues. And we're all kind of just... Uh, we've become really good friends with an old couple that live across the road to us that I swear must be nearly a hundred. But um, I've, I've, I've lived opposite them for nearly 10 years and I've never really spoken to them. Um, they drop little letters through our, f f uh, through our door because they love the rainbow that my daughter made that's in the front window. And she's become pen pals with a little old lady across the road. And it's, it's beautiful. Um, take this opportunity to see like what's on your own doorstep and what, what can, yeah, who can you keep in contact with? And like, yeah, stay safe work together and yeah, I'll, I'll share some tips and, and, and links and stuff uh, yeah, when, when it finishes. So yeah, thank you very much guys. Thank you very much Scott, that was brilliant. Um, anybody got any questions, any thoughts they'd like to add? <clears throat> yeah, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course you can. Um, rightly or wrongly, we have BT, you know, we, have, we have BT for a specific reason in the fact that um, Bridgewater Carnival like to use it when they're having a carnival to live stream from us. So they use our building, you they use our Wi-Fi. But BT have basically turned around to me and said, sorry, you've got to pay your £85 a month for the BT um, internet line, etc. cetera. Um, but I cannot access it. The only place I can access it is at work. Um, is there anything I can, there's nothing I can do about that apparently, but any so ideas? This is, your, this is your works connection, yeah? Yeah, so our works connection, we've got BT um, <clears throat> and, um, and they've said, well, you should have gone onto a VoIP system, but we can't change you now. Mm -hmm. um, so if you'd taken our advice three months ago, then you would be fine. And it's like, um, great, thanks chaps. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a tricky one when it comes to communicate, yeah, comms and stuff, they, they, they regard it as just a standard utility bill. So it's, if, if the building's running, um, <laughs> even though no one's using it, it's still there. It's being used exactly the same as, yeah, your water, uh, gas and electric. Um, yeah. they, they kind of, you can, you can, you can ask them for a discount. Some people have been quite kind. Um, BT aren't known for being particularly kind, but, um, if you don't get, if you don't ask, um, and certainly explain to them on the basis or, or worst case uh, that sometimes a bit of a loose threat works as well. And just be like, yeah, I, I, if, yeah, can you help me out? If not, I'm certainly not going to be looking at, uh, yeah. Um, um, renewing my contract at the end of the contract and see if that gives you a bit more buying power. With them. I've got so much internet at work and my yeah. internet here at home is drowning under four, well, two adults, I've got an 18 year old working from home and I've got a yeah. year 10 student trying to work as well school wise. So <clears throat> internet yeah. is a little premium. I'm planning uh -huh. on popping around. The, luckily I live around the corner from Rog. So I'm just going to pop around and sit next, sit out his outside his house um, in the nice sunny weather and use his, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. And are you using, are you using the internet to connect to resources that are at your work though? Is there a server at work and stuff? There is a server at work, which I haven't had to do yet. Okay. Um, but we have used team viewer and that sort of thing in the past. I haven't, I haven't done that yet. I've, I've been lucky to kind of have everything that I need here. So yeah, it's just more keeping up to date with everything really. And it's just utilizing the internet, you know, that we've got available to us, but it's, it's not, we only yeah. live sort of 20 minute walk from work and it feels like it might as well be a million miles away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the, the other option there is if, if you were to uh, speak, yeah, whoever does your IT, have a chat with them and see if they can set up remote desktop for you because remote desktop from your home will use a lot less internet to then log on to a PC at work and then you can be using that PC at work's internet so you'll get the benefit of the speed 
and and whatever protection and stuff you've got through your firewall at work then oh, okay so mr moore when you've finished then i'll have a conversation okay he's not listening to me <laughs> he's listening he's just very wisely muted <laughs> <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to create any work for you <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts from anyone or questions? No, there were some really good bits and pieces in there. I've made quite a lot of notes, actually. And it's around about, um, although we're used to working from home, there's normally two of us here. And I, I work with my daughter and she's got three children. So she's now stuck in Cannington and I'm in Taunton. And <coughs> very good at dealing with that on the day to day basis. The server is based here. So I'm going to have to find better ways when she comes back to work full time because she won't be traveling backwards and forwards as much as she is, you know, has been previously, to connect to the server here. Or, or as you suggested today, maybe go to um, Microsoft Teams where I can use the, the cloud to find everything up there. Because otherwise she's permanently waiting for me to send her files and, and move things over to her. So there's yeah. some really good suggestions for me, thank you. Uh, yeah, we've got, I'm trying to think. There's three or four big projects in the wings now from the back of this that we've had clients that have been dubious about moving to the cloud before. Um, and they're in the situation now, very similar to every, yeah, what, you, what you're explaining, um, that we're, we're going to be moving all of their data up to Office 365. So we're doing a, a full SharePoint migration for them. And then we're going to put the Teams front end on it because the Teams front end will just make it user friendly for them. Mm -hmm. So um, the one thing you can do, you can kind of, if, if, if you wanted to and you didn't want to go full full hog yet and it's a lot of it's trying to, it's in the design process um, you can a lot of people want to just move their business and they just want to replicate exactly what they've got and let's just put it in the cloud um, sometimes that's a good thing sometimes uh, because people don't necessarily like change so they just want to really, yeah, get it done uh, the unrewarding job of, of working in IT is if you've done your job correctly most people shouldn't know you've done it um, but with this, I would recommend sometimes you kind of find new ways of doing things and by embracing that new technology early on, um, and, and testing it out and, and figuring out your own route in, into that environment. So with stuff that you, if you've got a business kind of think of the way you work now, now or, or did work as your legacy way and create your new way by setting up a, if you've got an office 365 tenancy, starting off with OneDrive, which is your own personal storage area, being a bit of an innovator yourself and using OneDrive to start creating new documents and pulling those legacy files over as and when you need them into the new environment. Because then you can share stuff from OneDrive with other people and you're starting to learn how it works. Once you're then good with it and you understand it and you've pulled some of your important stuff, the stuff that you use day to day into it, you could then look at, setting up an area that's just called legacy drive or legacy storage and pull all the old, yeah, all the exit, all the rest of the stuff over into your new way of working. And that way you've kind of done it in a bit more of a piecemeal step-by-step -step process that you've understood it instead of that big bang. Mm -hmm. um, that I, 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 it's, it's my certain, it's certainly my preferred way of doing it. And if we could do that with all of our clients, I, I certainly would. Some of our clients have got, a good four or 500 people working for them though. And to try and do that with four or 500 people and, and, and teach them yeah, e each bit, you don't get the luxury of doing it. So we have to do big bang. So yeah, if you've got the, the, the ability to go for it that way, I would recommend dip your toe in and you can also, you can always dial back if you don't like it, then you can go, well, I've only created five files in the cloud and it's not for me. I'll put those back on my server. Yeah. A lot of our files are quite big as well. Cause we do a lot of graphical work. Um, yeah. What sort of size is the storage up there that goes with the Microsoft 365 account? Office 365, every user gets a terabyte of storage for themselves, which is a, a lot. Yeah. Um, and then SharePoint, so, one, so the difference between the two, OneDrive for business for yourself, each person gets their own OneDrive and each person gets one terabyte of storage. SharePoint is then collaborative storage. So collaborative storage is like a mapped drive on the network. Um, you get one terabyte for the company and then for every member you have, you get an additional, I think it's an, a, an extra 250 gig for each user. Don't quote me on that because they've changed it quite regularly. But um, the, the way Teams works now as well, Teams, Teams 
well, when you create a team in Teams, it creates a SharePoint for you. It creates a, an Office 365 email group. Uh, it, it, it creates all of the bits for you that we used to do for you. Um, so you get all those bits as well. So yeah, t t Teams, that, that front end makes it a little bit easier just yeah, just to understand as well. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because we, we've got everything else on Gmail. And we use Drive and everything and share it, but it takes so long to upload stuff to Yeah, Gmail. yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's right. Scott, it just um, leaves me to say thank you very much again. Uh, much appreciated. The comments, some of the comments that were in the chat were up from people that have had to leave uh, have, have all been about how useful it's been um, so thank you very much for that. No um, problem at all. Um, if everyone can see in the chat as well, I've, I've shared all the links I promised I would. Um, you should just be able to copy those out and chuck them into a Word document or a, a, a notepad. Um, if not, I can well, I can put them in a Word file and share them on, on the Zoom now if you'd like them. I was going to ask if you could, if you could send the, um, the recording across to Tracy. Mm hmm um they would go out on that then wouldn't they because we'll yeah we'll send yeah, the, the recording out that'd be great not a problem at all yeah i can do that yeah i can send that all out not a problem. wonderful that's brilliant thank you very much guys stay safe thank, thank you, you so us. much that was really good cheers thank you take everyone care. take care bye, bye. bye. bye.